So I'm doing an overview on this G305 uh, step file and like set of components that I'm releasing. Uh, so I import this into all my mice once I make the shape. And I'm just gonna kind of go over what body is what because steps don't save the body names, only components. And there's too many bodies for me to want to individually relabel them all, sorry. So this is the base plate. This is such that it is the stock lift off distance right here, this, this bottom. So if you, you know, want it to be shorter because you're gonna use taller mouse feet or I don't know, vice versa or something, you would end up altering that. Uh, I don't know when you would really, because it's like niche, not many people do it. Presumably if you're making a mouse, it could just be a one-off for you, but if you want others to be able to download it and use it without issues, or at least without surprises, you'd probably keep it stock uh, or at least mention it to people. So this is a rough scroll wheel, not, not much explained there. These are side buttons that have this like curved hinge that uh, someone gave me the idea for a while ago and I've been incorporating into pretty much every mouse, both for this top connecting part and then for the side buttons. Like here in the O1, you can see the top connecting part. And that's because I want to print in as few pieces as possible. So that's why I've been doing that. So obviously you're gonna end up having a whole bottom and connecting these, but they're just floating off to the side for now. Uh, these three gray bodies, uh, I extrude through. Third one's at a different height, you can extrude through. I use them to punch the holes necessary for the bottom for the sensor, the on off switch, and then this back screw, which I've only been using one back screw for the most part. Uh, but obviously you use more, you can just add you know, more holes. Uh, that's also what these left and right like columns are for. I don't use them anymore for the most part, but you know I have used them occasionally. And this one's positioned so it's roughly where that, that hole is in the G305 PCB. Uh, if you want to use them, obviously they're there. I would probably hide them and not use them. Uh, these are the side button posts. Uh, they're very thin as is. I just use them for placeholders and then I build you know, more geometry around them. At minimum, you're gonna to wanna to take these and most likely you know, extend them by some amount, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, and then also just you know, add chamfers, whatever, right? Build it out so it is a more suitable geometry to be used. It doesn't need to be so thick, but you probably just want more support than these give, but they're just mostly for placeholder and just you know to, to start with essentially, which is what a lot of this is. Because what I'll end up doing is I'll end up importing this, like I say, and then probably make, uh, I don't know, 20% changes, so to speak. Like, it's not like you're repositioning the PCV much or anything, but you're, you're gonna decide, oh, you know, I do or don't want a DPI button. I wanna move the side buttons here. The side buttons have to go somewhere else for space reasons or because the mouse you're making has a different shape or something, so you have to move them and you obviously have to like fit them and everything else, whatever the case is, it's gonna change per mouse. You know, let's say you're making a really uh, short mouse. Obviously, you're not going to have these back hinges. You're going to move them up because they'll just be outside the mouse. Same with the back column. Uh, this this top column is uh, a screw through column for the bottom here. here oops, can't delete this. That's a screw through column for if you actually do want to actually use a screw post there. I mean, you don't have to. You could just use all snap fits or hinges or something. I use these like very light back hinges and then like front like lineups essentially, like here in the OP1 or O1. No, if you want. Uh, basically right there. So they slot into the front and you can see it's overlapping there because I, I want them to, like, you can see this gap right here. This is intentional. It is weird, but it's a, like a 3D printing tolerance type thing. It's intentional. Uh, and then essentially in the back here too, this one's actually a bit looser, still has a bit of overlap here because I, you know, designed it like that, essentially. And then I have some areas in the back for it to push down on and have some resistance. Uh, that's such that, you know, even though there's a screw post here, it's just a little extra support in the back. The back is pretty good. I'm not gonna say it's like built like a tank, but in general, I found the back is completely fine. The trick is to have the front be you know stable enough while also still having like flexibility for your mouse button actu actuation that the hinges give here. Uh, that's the hardest part because you don't want to accidentally actuate them by it moving too much, but you also want to keep it in place such that there's not really left to right wobble. So it's you know you'll probably just need to do a couple of prints to get an idea. It's not super complicated. It's just you know you might not have it right in your first try at all. Uh, what else didn't I explain here? Uh, so I have these little gaps here. This is for routing the mod kit through. Uh, you would just normally, here, I have weird chamfers that you would delete. You would probably delete those chamfers and then like, you know, pull this through as normal geometry normally. But if you want hole, or not holes, wire routing for the mod kit to go under, uh, that's so that basically the scroll wheel doesn't ever have, have a chance of like, let's say you don't glue or tape your mod kit in place 100%. What'll happen is if you were to route the wires under the, the scroll, there's a chance that then your skull could catch the wires or something and then you feel a bit of resistance or, you know, something. It'd basically just be bad. It's an unintended uh, thing that you'd like to design around. You can subvert this by instead of having that gap by just routing your wires kind of through here. And that's also what I have these little weird, you know, whatever you want to call these posts for. Uh, it's essentially because it's two wires, so I just put one in there, one in there. Then I tuck them in. It's a loose but, you know, 
uh, I guess, functional fit. You could add a piece of tape here or something a lot of the time, or just increase them. Like, you know, you just take it and then obviously make it, say, 0.4 millimeters thicker or something, and then they'll fit in there better. Uh, but basically, I didn't ever, you know, I don't ever want to have to, like, really, really, really push them in. So that's why it's not loose, but loose-ish. And then typically, I end up routing it, you know, back and then up through this hole right here, which is another reason why I don't tend to use this post. But, you know, obviously, you can do whatever you want. Uh, so for these, these like floating gold hinge parts, uh, just like this back bit, you're going to end up connecting those like this to the top shell. At least, you know, if you're going to copy the design formula that I use, I think it's fairly simple. That's a lot of why I do it. It works and it's simple. That's why I do a lot of things. Uh, other than that, this is a battery holder. I tend to not use it anymore because so far I've just been like the last thing, three mice or something. I've just been doing basically only for the mod kit. Uh, my logic is essentially anyone who wants to use a AAA battery will put one in there and you don't necessarily need a special fancy battery holder for it. This is just mostly for like size purposes. So let's say you do build a mouse and then you realize like, you know, if you're going to put the battery roughly here, uh, basically, you know, kind of how high you need the back to be or whatever the case is like that. I don't use it anymore though, but I'm going to include it just because it, essentially there's no downside. You just hide the body or delete it or whatever the case is. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned the DPI button with the hinges. But you're essentially going to incorporate it just like the hinges where it builds up into that top part. Uh, and then you're going to put a little a screw here and that's going to activate your DPI switch. I only, I did like a custom one for someone. Uh, it's not something I'm probably going to do moving forward because I don't use DPI buttons. But like, you know, I built it so I might as well give it. Uh, and obviously, you know, it's not like it's a perfect design or anything. It is built in the same way as this, as, here, I'm going to orient it right such that when I print it up top, it'll print from the bottom without needing supports. And then it'll be like here or whatever the case is. Obviously you can just build the DPI button completely differently, probably better. This is just simple. So, uh, but yeah, that is an overview of the components for the most part and how to use them. Oh, I suppose uh, when I mentioned that back bit right here for it to push into this back support area or whatever, that's what these extra floating gray ones are. Uh, same thing, just redundant. You just can't really have them symmetrically. Like you see, it's more forward here because you're generally going to have a spot for the side buttons somewhere. So that's why that's there. Obviously, you know, you're free to use or not use any amount of these, but that's kind of why everything's here. So, so uh, just an addendum clip. I think I mentioned that they're free, but it's going to be on printables, Maker World, you know, all the normal stuff. Uh, it's going to be under like a you know, Creative Commons, do whatever you want license, you know, commercial, whatever, all the case. I don't care if you make a million mice off this or whatever, obviously. It's kind of why I'm posting it. Um, just, you know, do the YouTube stuff, like, comment, subscribe, blah, 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 download it on those, uh, you know, thanks for watching.